This is a satellite view of Austin, Texas from 1984. At the time, the city had a population of around 448,000 people, making it the 42nd largest city in the country. 39 years later, Austin has a population of over 960,000 and is the 10th largest city in the U.S. Oh, and it looks like this now. In 2020, the city of Austin gave Joe Biden over 76% of the vote. It was one of the most Democratic areas in all of Texas, and the county it's located in netted Biden over 250,000 votes. If you follow Texas politics, these numbers shouldn't be all that surprising. Though Texas is a red-leaning state, Austin is extremely progressive and has supported the Democratic candidate in every statewide election in the past decade. There's a reason some have started to call it the San Francisco of Texas. It's a very liberal area, and its blue appearance on an otherwise red map makes it conspicuous. Thus, it's only fair that we start our story in Travis County, Austin's home. As shocking as it may seem now, 20 years ago, Travis County was a red-leaning area. It voted for George W. Bush in his 2000 presidential run, and it gave him a fairly solid margin en route to a 21-point blowout statewide. However, in 2004, Travis County flipped, voting for Democrat John Kerry over Bush. The county continued to trend left after Bush left office, and in 2020, it voted for Joe Biden by 45 points. Biden did very well in Travis County due to his appeal to college-educated voters, particularly those in the suburbs. Due to the growing tech industry in the region and the influx of college-educated voters from all across the nation, it's likely that Austin's entire metro area will continue to trend left and push Texas towards Democrats. But just as consequentially, a little over an hour south of Austin lies San Antonio. San Antonio itself has nearly 500,000 more residents than Austin, thus making it an even bigger player in Texas politics. It's also more interesting in terms of competitiveness, as the boundaries of its metro area take in more Republican counties than that of Austin. In fact, in 2016, Donald Trump actually won the San Antonio metro area, although it was only by around 1%. Trump lost it in 2020 as it shifted towards Biden and voted for him by just over three points. This is a very different dynamic from what goes on up in Austin, as Austin's metro area is smaller in terms of size and thus takes in fewer Republican counties. That said, like San Antonio, Austin's metro area did trend towards Joe Biden in 2020. In 2016, Clinton won it by 19.5%, then in 2020 it moved towards Biden, supporting him by nearly 27 points. In total, Biden netted over 318,000 votes from the twin metro areas, severely cutting into Trump's statewide margin and making 2020 the closest a Democratic presidential candidate had come to winning Texas since 1996. If Texas ever does flip blue, the first two cities Democrats should think are Austin and San Antonio. But things are very different just a couple hours south. Texas's border with Mexico has historically been a very democratic area. Even back in the early 2000s when George Bush won Texas by over 20 points both times, the southern portion of the state was a deep shade of blue. Despite many other changes statewide, this was still the case in 2016. Hillary Clinton's strongest counties came in the border region, specifically in the southernmost portion called the Rio Grande Valley, often abbreviated as the RGV. In the greater RGV region, Clinton received over 63% of the vote and wrote to a nearly 31-point defeat of Donald Trump in the region. Clinton performed exceptionally well with Hispanic voters, and seeing as the greater RGV is over 84% Hispanic, it was the perfect storm for a localized blue wave within Texas. But in 2020, despite improvements made in most major cities, Joe Biden collapsed in the RGV, specifically with Hispanic voters. He only won the region by around 11 points, 20% less than Clinton just four years prior. Notably, Biden performed remarkably poorly with these same Hispanic voters that had given Clinton strong margins. His disaster in the South was made even further puzzling when you consider how he'd done statewide. In most other places, he'd improved on Clinton's numbers, yet in the South, he completely collapsed. So realistically, why did Biden do so poorly in Southern Texas? The answer, just like in Austin and San Antonio, lies in education. The largest county in the greater RGV is Hidalgo, a nearly 93% Hispanic county directly on the border with Mexico. For the majority of voters in Hidalgo County, Spanish is the primary language spoken at home, and most ancestry can be traced back to neighboring Mexico. Per the U.S. Census Bureau, only around 19% of voters in the county have received any sort of college degree, putting it significantly below the national average. More importantly, the discrepancy between college education in Travis County, home of Austin, and Hidalgo is massive, as nearly 53% of voters in Travis County hold college degrees, making it 34% more educated than Hidalgo. 
Biden's most notable gains in Texas came with college-educated voters in cities like Austin, so it makes sense that the area he'd lose the most support in would be the area with the least college education. I also do want to briefly mention that Trump has owed a good amount of credit himself for the rightward trends among Hispanic voters in Texas, as he made Latino outreach a huge part of his campaign and actually ran ads in Spanish across multiple states, Texas included, of course. In the end, these strategies paid dividends for him. In Texas counties that border Mexico, Trump performed 18% better in 2020 than he did in 2016. Further rightward shifts in the southern region of the state give Republicans reason for optimism, but they cannot get complacent, as we haven't even discussed the biggest problem for Texas Republicans yet. Remember how the first topic I brought up was Joe Biden's gains in the cities of Austin and San Antonio? As impressive as these shifts were, they are nowhere near as influential to Texas's electoral decisions as Dallas up north. You see, while an impressive 4.8 million Texans live in the Austin-San Antonio combined metropolitan area, their voting power pales in comparison to the 7 million people that inhabit Dallas's metro area. Larger cities in the Dallas region include Fort Worth, Arlington, Denton, Frisco, and Plano. And in 2020, this area gave Biden nearly 54%, netting him 238,000 votes. But in 2016, Hillary Clinton actually barely won the Dallas metro area. She only carried it by around 10,000 votes, making it essentially a net neutral for her margin statewide. The fact that in just four years, Democrats improved by over 220,000 votes in just one single metro area should be a serious cause for concern among Republicans, especially Donald Trump. While the Dallas area has been moving away from Republicans for some time, it's still worth talking about why it was Trump that appeared to be the straw that broke the camel's back. The answer, just like in Austin and San Antonio, as well as in the South, lies in education. Education is an especially important issue when talking about trends in Texas politics because of a phenomenon called education polarization. Essentially, in recent years, as issues like abortion and gay marriage have risen in importance, voters who have college degrees are more likely to vote with Democrats because they are more socially liberal, while voters without college degrees are more likely to move towards Republicans as they are less socially liberal and likely to care significantly less about these issues. Anyways, Donald Trump's strongest demographic in Texas in 2020 was white, non-college-educated voters. On the contrary, the group that swung the most against him were the educated white voters. Dallas's metro area is ripe with this particular type of voter, and its northern suburbs are over 50% educated. As a direct result of this, Donald Trump lost notable ground in these areas. In fact, the most educated county in Texas is a part of the greater Dallas area. The county in question is Collin County, which voted for Donald Trump by nearly 17% in 2016, but in 2020, the gap closed to just 4%. College-educated voters in Texas moving against Trump have swung all types of cities across the state towards the Democratic Party, and Dallas is probably the best example of that you can find. So with all these favorable trends towards Democrats, what's keeping them from winning Texas? What's the hump they need to get over? Well, first, they do need to continue their gains in areas like Dallas, but that shouldn't be too difficult, since they're already well on their way in that department. Rather, they need to start ramping up their margins in the state's largest city, Houston. Houston is kind of the sleeping giant of Texas. As you'd expect, it votes for Democrats, but not by enough to propel them to victory statewide. As a metro area, though, it doesn't truly do much to help Democrats in general. In fact, the way Greater Houston voted in 2020 is actually pretty similar to the way Greater Dallas voted in 2016. Both metro areas backed the Democratic nominee by 1%, essentially creating a net neutral, and both actually did trend left compared to the previous election. In the case of Dallas, it ended up being strong for Democrats, as Biden did 8% better there than Clinton, and netted over 220,000 more votes than she did. Houston's metro area is still a couple of years behind Dallas, and that's why I like to call it Texas's sleeping giant. If it wakes up, it could be the final straw for Republicans, and it could be the defining thing that pushes Democrats over that hump in Texas. To recap, I wanted to characterize the topics I discussed today. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to talk about smaller cities like Waco or Lubbock because I try to keep these videos digestible and I'm already running out of time, but nevertheless, let me do one last rundown. Austin and San Antonio are kind of combined into one huge metro area that's been improving for Democrats for years. It's the San Francisco of Texas. Dallas's metro is the slow but steady Democratic-leaning area that may not be as outwardly progressive as Austin, but it's still going a long way towards turning Texas blue. The southern border region is the anomaly of the state. It's the one area where Joe Biden performed way worse than Hillary Clinton. It's kind of the inverse of the big cities, and it could help keep Republicans afloat in Texas for the time being. But then, of course, there's Houston. The sleeping giant. For now, it's just that, asleep and only giving Democrats small margins. But if it ever sees a shift anywhere close to the magnitude of what's been going on in Austin, San Antonio, or Dallas, Texas's days as a conservative state may come to an end. Hey, thanks so much for watching. As you can probably tell, this video is not easy to make, and 
took me a while to edit. If you could please genuinely like and comment which state you'd like to see, that would help the algorithm promote videos like this more and give me an idea of the type of content you would like to see next. As of right now, we're just 25 subscribers away from 6,000. Please, if you're not already subscribed, subscribe to help me get there. Thank you so much.